Hey everyone, this is DJ, and I wanted to make a build video for this table and room. I've been posting about some of my games online, and, and the, the table itself and the room tend to get more uh, comments than what's going on in my games. A few people have asked me for, for plans, for dimensions, so I wanted to... I started making an email to send a few people the a few files that are related to this but i figured i'd just make a build video so let's let's take a look at how this came to be um this is the first floor of our house it looks like a basement uh but it is not it's the first floor the top floor is the living space and this came to be when uh my wife called me from uh wyoming vacationing telling me she told me she spent a little too much on shoes <laughs> and i told her oh that's totally fine but hear me out. <laughs> what if I build a D and D room? Uh, that'll make up for it, right? Uh, and that turned into this. So, uh, going all the way back to the start, here is what it looked like ahead of uh, the space, ahead of the build. So there was a, a, a wooden wall kind of separator thing here. There's been an art studio and a gym in there. We haven't really used the gym a lot, so. Um, tore that out and first step really is to design it uh, I probably have a little sketch or a drawing somewhere uh, but I kind of went right to uh, 3D Studio Max I make video games for a living so this, this 3D Studio Max I use this in, at work um, and my, the, uh, here was the thought basically I wanted a hex essentially what is a hexagon an eight sided table but but the DM wants more, so I took two of the sides and I essentially made one of the corners recessed instead. I wanted an area for a laptop. I wanted little cubbies for each player so they could put books and, and you know extra stuff underneath and not clutter up the game space. Uh, I wanted a 60-inch TV. So the two things that the size of this really came down to was you know, what was going to fit between these two walls, really. There, This way, there's a little more room. So um, right now, the chairs are laid out, so there's a chair at the apex of it. It was kind of designed so that the chairs would be... It, it, there's some reconfiguration stuff uh, that I'll get into in a bit. But um, so anyway, I kind of measured, you know, okay, somebody sitting, you know, here and here, and they're going to need to back up and... How is it going to be too close to here? Because we want people to be able to get around. It's actually pretty tight. When someone's sitting on either corner, they kind of have to get up for you to, or if they squeeze way in. But um, so this is the basic layout of it. I started with a hexagon, you know, extruded it. Uh, I, I put in a little, you know, I designed a little to maximize this guy. Oopsie. Um, I. Uh, it, well, and I bought the TV first, so then I measured the dimensions of the TV. I'm like, okay, I need a whole, you know, it's kind of based on that. So, like, how much space then? And this is going to be a plexiglass recessed thing, so the wood through the TV should, you know, you should be able to put your books, like, right over it. Um, so I, I made a little stub square thing that's the TV size, and then from there I'm like, okay, you know, maybe 10 inches or 12 inches to the edge. And then I want the lower to be a little bit bigger and consider how big the room is. And um, so I've got layers, uh, layer editor, where I, you know, have like reference objects and dimension stuff in here. There's, uh, we'll have to go wireframe for this. Yeah, I can see if I get rid of, yeah, here's all the just. You know, reference. Oh, I think I messed up the size of the scale of it at one point. But um, anyway, so there's there's these little measuring things. So there's you know the tail. How we hide all this extra stuff? Where's the hide button? Hide selection. There we go. Uh, anyway, so I designed it in here. Uh, I got measurements for like you know how deep is this piece of wood and what are the angles and all this stuff. Um, and I measured my laptop. Not a lot deviated from this. Um, I think I ended up recessing. I think the the laptop recession wasn't as big as it. Uh, in the design as it was in the end. I ended up cutting it like all the way back more. 
Um, I ended up chopping uh, this from like about here to here just so that I could have, you know, a book underneath here and be able to turn the pages and have this thing not interrupt it. Um, so that's the basic layout. If anybody wants this, I can give you a DXF or STL or the max file or whatever. Um, here are all the dimensions. I put all the stuff in, in, the, in a spreadsheet. So the lower table from corner to corner is 83.3 inches. I don't remember what these other columns are about. Come on. Uh, lower table from side to side is 76.96 inches. Um, oh, I think I was just doing like, I don't know, uh, lower table center to side, lower table center to corner, and so on. So the TV, I measured at these dimensions, and I, I'll put in the comments the, the model number if anyone wants to buy this exact TV. Uh, corner to DM cutout, which I think is this thing, and so on. So I'll just kind of scroll quick, slowly through it. So if anyone wants to like replicate this, here are all my numbers. And then bookshelf stuff for the wall. So there we go. Uh, that is it. Now let's take a look at some, I've got a bunch of like photos and a couple of videos that I'll show. I kind of took some pictures along the way. Uh, so let's kind of step through some of this stuff. Uh, beginning with, so there's the, the walls. Uh, and then once that was removed, first I, from the 3D Studio Max, I went and bought foam core i wanted to test this out you know before wood i'd never woodworked in my life so i wanted to kind of make a faux version of the table and sit there and see if like is the gap from the lower to the upper good i wanted my my here, here was the the stupid uh, measurement for that is i wanted a whiskey like highball <laughs> to fit between the two uh so that is the the height difference between them um, I ha this is just sitting on like a, a, a kitchen nook table right now. I ended up making a, a with pipes a variable height stand for underneath. Uh, I convinced my wife that she wanted to buy new uh, dining room <laughs> seats so I could take the uh, existing ones we had. Uh, she was stoked about that. Uh, but this is this is the bare room we with just you know the the bookshelf brought in. Uh, so. Yeah, this is the TV sitting on top of it. Here it is now, the hole cut out and the laptop sitting there. You can see the laptop hangs over the edge and there was a little gap there. So I ended up going like back a little bit. And I think the whole table is, is sh no, it, you know, I think the TV is centered uh, that direction. Um, so you can fit one, two, three, four, five, six players around it uh, comfortably. Uh, another change I ended up making before I finished is uh, this was a hard one. I ended up making this recession on both sides of the table. And my thinking was, you know, this is great for D&D, &D, but what if I want to do, you know, Warhammer or Chainmail or a one-on-one -on -one game? You know, I, sitting with this recession, can get closer and reach minis that are out here easily. Uh, you know, someone over on this side wouldn't be able to. So I made a it into a convertible. So, like, from here to here is a, another recession now. And this piece and the lower piece it like slots in there so I can take away like a leaf of a table and remove this little concave section of the table in the end so that's not reflected here yet but that's where I landed so I was testing the offsets I 3d printed uh, little little standoffs to kind of hold this at an altitude so yeah there's the lower and the upper there's some just testing the video and cables and all that stuff uh, I've gotten power running underneath it. Uh, now I'm starting to populate the room a little bit with my mini shelves. And I think at this point I took my first uh, video showing this off. Let's take a look at that. All right, so I'm, I've got a new D&D table build I'm working on. Uh, I haven't done any in progresses yet. So here is the first prototype of the table. I did it in foam core first. So it's got, it's a hexagonal shape. So eight players can fit around it. 
although I've cut out a recession for the DM so I can be a little closer and reach the map. I'm probably gonna do the same on the other side, kind of cut out. So if I'm just doing a one-on-one -on -one, like Warhammer 40K game, you can both kind of reach into the center a little easier. Um, then there's gonna be like kind of standoffs at each of these and backing. So I already talked about that, so let's just kind of skip ahead. There's like, I, we got that uh, cool leather map thing. I'm talking about, I'm gonna put some shelves here, some shelves across the back. Uh, that leather shield thing we just found at an antique store in town, and, we're, and my wife was like, we should buy that. <laughs> like, okay, <laughs> it goes in my D&D &D room. Uh, here's the, I'll turn it back on. On turning the, the, the phone core into a wooden two-layer table. So outside is the upper level. Well, I covered it because it was it rained a bit today. So I've just done... Uh, I've, I've drawn the hex out on it. I am cutting in little biscuit notches and then I'm about to glue this up to be one uh, eight foot by eight foot table and then I'll cut it down to the hex size and the cutouts and everything. Uh, and then the top layer is out there. So there is my build in progress. All right, this is DJ. See y'all. Okay, so from there, uh, next video, this is like two days later. Hey, here's day three of the D&D table build. Um, so here's what we got so far. Um, all right, so there's the, the prototype table still. I've got the, the bones cut out. I've got all the basic pieces for um, the framing for the back shelf, the bookshelf, the uh, board game shelf. And we're on the second glue up now. Uh, this is the center, two panels. There's yesterday's glue up. I've taken it down. It's kind of sitting over there. Uh, I'm just about to take this down. They recommend 24 hours. I'm letting it uh, dry for 12 hours. It's been 12 hours now. It's pretty hot out, so I think we should be good. I'm going to glue up the last two pieces for the bottom half. Um, yeah, <laughs> this has turned into quite an ordeal. Um, one thing I did that was kind of nice is... Um, I sort of cut around, I, I sort of building around this pipe. So in each of the vertical elements, there's a little cutout. Okay, we'll skip ahead. Uh, uh, let's look at the next video. Why is my computer kind of freezing? Uh, come on. All right, more of my D&D table build. So I have just removed it. The TV's over there against the wall. The top layer's there. I'm just taking the bottom layer outside. Um, I've channeled those so that the pilaster, like rails that the, the shelves, like hooks can sit on. Uh, so those have been routed. Um, and I made this. This is a galvanized pipe base that I'm, uh, that I'm thinking I'm going to use. Uh, I can get these in kind of any height, so I can really adjust it. Right now it's slightly too high it's at, at like 20, 28 inches. I wanted it 27 and a half. Um, so I'll adjust that a little bit. And then let's check out the table itself. So I finished the glue up. I glued up all the, the planks, uh, made a little bit of adjustments to the line. And then now I've just cut it out. So here is the hexagonal table. And these two sections are removable and will turn into like insert things. So, and, and I'm gonna, now I'm gonna bring the old, so there's the, the template in two halves of the lower table, which is now this. So I'm gonna cut a little recession in there dee, 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 to be like that recession. That way the DM can kind of sit in closer. Um, and then these will turn into inserts so that if I want it to be a full hex table for like hold them or something This will like slide in and an insert will fill in that gap And I'm gonna do that on both sides so that two players can sit in close if I want to do Like just tabletop mini gaming or whatever so Yeah, there we go in progress <laughs> uh, Okay, the next one 
All right, D and D room build in progress day. I don't even know what day it is. So I, I got the top all cut out. I've got it all um, sanded. I've got the edges of it nicely um, routed to get a little rounded edge and a little bevel lip. Uh, I still have to do that to the bottom layer. Um, so yeah, now I, we can kind of see it all coming together. Um, I'm working on stains and finishes. So here's a couple of test stains. There's a red, what is that? Red oak or something like that. That's a, yeah, red oak. This is an espresso. I think this is the one I'm going with. This one looks really nice. This is a gel stain. Kona. I've ordered, excuse me, I've ordered another one from General Finishes that I'm, I think is going to be nice too, but this is the one I'm leading to now. Ah, so there we go. <laughs> All these tools and stuff and just, yeah. Here we go, d, d table and room in progress. <laughs> Uh, we're getting there. All right, let's just keep going through them. All right, more progress. I got uh, the back wall reframed. So I put the leather shield thing in the middle. I uh, just got this back from the framers. The original basic D&D &D cover art. Sensor, uh, not Mulvey. Hell yeah. <laughs> and then the Death of Sturm from Dragonlance. Also signed by Elmore. There we go. And continue on. More progress. All right, there's a few details left, but the basics of my new D&D &D room are in place. The table's there. I redid the uh, Death of Sturm an original red, oh, uh, basic d, d red box cover art, both signed by Elmore. I got my first edition player's handbook, Dice Tower. <laughs> that thing's awesome. I got my uh, Dungeon Master gavel for when uh, the crowdy get, <laughs> the crowd, the gang gets a little rowdy. And I got two layers. I still got to do separators for each player. I got my deceased stamp <laughs> if any <laughs> player totally dies. Uh, I saw that online, I thought that was cool. And then I got the menus, printed out these little uh, letter things for little letter plates for all the menus. Yeah, in progress. So the uh, bookshelf there is outside right now. Uh, it's design, cut, routed sanded ready for staining uh so that's gonna go up once i stain it and seal it uh that'll be up in the next couple of days and then i just gotta do this little back bookshelf and we're done and then uh some of the then the fancy stuff begins i'm gonna do speakers in the corners um a gopro straight down three cameras pointing at dm and players and then maybe even a connect up top pointing at the table for extra cool stuff <laughs> there we go <laughs> this is where we're at all right this is dj see ya all right continuing on it looks largely the same showing off the mic i've got voice filtering on that thing All right, here we go. So we got the table uh, in full effect now. Here comes the cabinets. Got them uh, mid-stain right now. Four of them stained, three to go. I'll install them in there. <laughs> All right, mail call today. I got my cloth print. Uh, se separate little tangent, this isn't part of the build, but I've been collecting these uh, cloth maps, a uh, company called Ner uh, Geekify.net prints these out. I've got Greyhawk, this one in here we're looking at is Blackmore, Kren, Known World, uh, Sword Coast, and yeah, this one's Blackmore. Uh, here's 
move the map up. Oh, no, they got Dr. Demento in the background. Got a couple uh, weapons mounted up there. Don't get me in there. <laughs> That's, uh, Holy I'll do another video on that. That's uh, from the 70s, a uh, castle. We're going to dance next week, so I'll be in there. So here's, All right, uh, today's cupcake eating contest brought to you by... No all right, that's not related to the build video, so let's skip ahead. All right, let's uh, cut over to some... Uh, one one thing that didn't really show up in here was... I made one little twist down the road. I just had the photo up a second ago. Where did I put it? Do, 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 do. I'm going to find it again. One, bear with me. Uh, the separators between the two levels in the end is different than that here look at this while I'm searching so there's kind of where it ended up uh, let me find those separators oh here we are so you can see this is the low I sort of disassemble this is the lower table um, the TV broke <laughs> <laughs> that was one thing that went wrong. The standoffs that I had uh, were not supporting it well in enough points, and the levels of them were not quite right. Uh, I cut the hole out for the table so tight that the swelling and the humidity and heat and, uh, of the wood was arc was bowing the the TV. So you put those two things together, and it started getting a bunch of deadlines uh, from the corner in both axes. So I bought a new TV and then made this to make it perfect. Um, each one of these holes now has a two power plugs and two USBs. Um, so there we go. Uh, that is mostly it. Uh, let's just blast through all the photos real quick just to show kind of like in how, you know, the sort of progress as it went. And then it'll also a couple of my games and features in the room. Uh, those are the things I used for doing the glue ups. There's where I got the idea of the galvanized base uh, frame uh, stand. Uh, I ended up switching this from from two to to four. I had I I put I cut out routed little recessions in here and then made cross beams. Uh, the table was not well supported enough. Uh, I ended up, th this mic was kind of always, always in the way, so I ended up drilling a hole right there and putting the gooseneck through it, and then so the base is here, the little the little uh, mute, unmute button is on the base of the mic, uh, so that's a little more ergonomic. This got chopped out from there to about here, so that, because if, if I have a book over here, uh, I'm not able to really turn the page as well. I added some under lighting, LED lighting too. Uh, there's the shelf up now. Uh, I th think it's um, the top is gluing up right now to the to it. Um, I added a lot more shelves in here, but uh, there's the beginnings of my putting them up. The Dragonlance books went all over here. I put sort of one through, you know, chainmail first, basic, second, third, fourth, and then fifth edition, and then like. Here he's, uh, yeah, there's better. <laughs> the additions through, I have pretty much every fifth book. Um, novels end up going there when I finish that. And then we ha now it's basic books here and then advanced one through, advanced first and second edition here. Uh, some booze and I play a little kill team with my buddy Pete across the street. Uh, I... I didn't talk about this yet. So, so the mic goes into this into the laptop. This Novation X Launchpad X uh, controls it. So, this is the Final Fantasy fanfare music. This is uh, high voice pitching for like gnomes and halflings and female voices. This is deep pitch shifting on that button for demons and dragons and stuff. Some of my board games, mostly D and D related. Uh, here was one of the early games we did. Uh, my good friend Cat DMing. Uh, salt marsh. Uh, there is me and my buddy Jack playing uh, Chainmail. That is an original 70-something copy of Chainmail right there. Uh, 
There's some of the some of the uh, what the the I think that was the the back wall shelves in their uh, staining phase. Dungeon Master Gavel. There's all the Dragonlance books put up there. I'm reading through those again with my mother-in-law right now. I've got her addicted to them. We're about 15 books in. There's what it looks like from the other way. And all these maps, basically the idea with these cloth maps is that hallway down there has the rest of them. Whatever adventure we're playing, I'll put the map up for that you know, realm uh, so the players can you know, admire the landscape of it. Uh, I ended up switching from these little letter plates to printing out, designing and printing nameplates for every single <laughs> monster type. Uh, if you watch Secrets of Blackmore, I think, uh, or no, the Chainmail 50th Anniversary YouTube video, will get into what that is. Uh, here is me. Terrain's my next thing. This is I'm trying to make all the terrain so I can have the entire adventure of Temple of the Frog. Uh, I started. I got a deceit stamp, so whenever a character dies, there are all, there are like probably 15 <laughs> dead players on the thing. See now, uh, it's Wendy from the Feast of Legends game. Check that out if you don't know about it. Uh, here's my prepping for a chainmail match. Uh, it's my brother and I playing uh, the 70s dungeon board game that kind of led to D&D coming into existence. Uh, uh, this is the Feast of Legends. I, I put in a little uh, Aqua Teen Hunger Force cameo that the players went crazy over and played the theme song on my little launch pad. <laughs> that was super awesome. Uh, Demogorgon mini. There is the Greyhawk Flaness map by uh, Anna. Uh, one of the dead players. Um, here is the back shelving all done now so these are the childhood uh modules i had when i was a kid that my dad made me throw out in the satanic panic that part of my nostalgia that started me buying up stuff again was tied to i was missing those and so i bought them again and then i didn't stop uh here's the reverse angle i ended up adding uh extra shelves in every other one because i bought more minis and they weren't fitting anymore so i could fit about twice as many in there i started printing out these little one inch tall uh, module covers front and back because uh, you can't really tell what is in these cubbies well so I printed these out so you can at a glance just to see that these this is my Dragonlance shelf uh, I've got them done for all of them now but uh, a couple more dead players there's uh, me having started to, to switch to the per uh, monster uh, nameplates this is sort of ripping through all my minis There is the Dragonlance Sansalon map, Corinne. One of my players just bought me a War Duke in package. Uh, that was a pretty sweet gift. Thank you, Jonathan. <laughs> you rock. Uh, and here's Wild Beyond the Witchlight. This is just before I replaced the TV. You can see all the lines going crazy there. Uh, yeah, there's the whole thing. Uh, just started a, a vintage series where we're going through uh, all the module, all, all the uh, earliest adventures, kind of by publishing order. So we're doing Palace of the Vampire Queen right now with up to, we've had, just had 15 players at our house the other day. Uh, Going to do a few Judges Guild and then start with G1 and kind of go through the GD, Q, and then T, and so on. More or less by publishing order. There's a uh, player's perspective. Move to the little bar over to this side. Yeah, there's the minis now with the extra shelves in there. Huh. This is a wandering monster fight club we did where you all, it's just PvP free for all. The players kill each other. That was super fun. And there's this, uh, the beginning of our uh, Palace of the Vampire Queen campaign. I made a, a little short uh, DM screen for myself. Uh, this is Wild Beyond the Witchlight we're playing right now. Oh, eh, just player death, uh, although we let her off the hook because <laughs> she leveled right before this happened, so we retconned that she had extra hit points and survived the gelatinous cube attack. Next week we'll pick up with her trying to get out of there. Uh, they've turned the table over. A bunch of bandits are storming the room. Our magic user used hold portal to keep them at bay. 
There is a, uh, and our players flying from hither to thither. That was uh, last night's game, or two nights ago. So, uh, thank you for watching. This is DJ. Uh, it's been a blast to make this thing. Uh, if you have any questions about it, let me know. Oh, there's a little DM screen I made, too, with little clippies in it, so I can have all the charts and player names and everything uh, up here. All right, take it all. Take it easy, everybody. I <laughs> hope you enjoyed this video. Bye, y'all.